So, Mr. Cavill, this is the mustache you prioritized. This is the mustache that derailed Justice League. You know what? I've got no argument. It looks really, really good. Yeah. Total sploosh. Mission Impossible Fallout. It is the latest addition to the 22-year-long running Mission Impossible franchise based on the TV series by Bruce Geller. The thing that astonishes me about this series of films is that... It has gone beyond its roots. Back when the first one came out, of course it was being compared to the original TV series. Notoriously, it was controversial because of what it did in that first movie and how many people thought it to be a slight against that show. But these series of movies have gone beyond it to such a profound level that it has its own identity. And many people actually consider it the brother spy franchise right next to the James Bond films and frankly I can't deny that. Matter of fact if you even go on Lewis at Man Bites Media we did an episode Man vs. Film where we actually debated James Bond vs. Mission Impossible. I'll put the link down there so you can check that out. I will definitely tell you Fallout is not only another worthy entry to the series it is definitely continuing the, the uphill climb that the series has reached up until this time. When you think about it, this franchise really started kicking it up a notch, I'd say starting with the third one moving upward, there's actually a progression. That's one thing the Mission Impossible franchise has over the Bond movies, is the fact that it actually has some development progressing from all of its films, even the first two. Many of the conflicts that come from this movie actually relate to a lot of things Ethan has done in the earlier films. Now, yes, a lot of this came up in Rogue Nation, but they really came to a head in Fallout. And in fact, one of the antagonist characters actually tries to use this against Ethan to try and turn everyone against him. It actually had me on edge as I was going, oh my god, is everything that we had seen before, all these heroic deeds Ethan did, and all the crazy things he did in order to get the job done, are they actually going to blow up in his face right now? You're always excited to see how he's going to stay one step ahead or even how he's going to catch up. And it, and that's the, the always been the fun of these movies, in particular uh, 4 or 5 and this one. There's a lot of investment because of all the stuff we've seen him go through. A lot of things do come to a head in this one. Of course, the plot thread about him and his wife Julia, played by Michelle Monaghan, that particular plot thread actually wraps up very beautifully and very poignantly and not in a way that I actually anticipated and it was beautiful. Now Michelle Monaghan, Julia, she's not in the movie long but man do they make her presence count and not in the way that you think it's gonna go. They set it up like you think it's gonna go that way but it actually winds up doing something different and it was spectacular. And not just Julia, pretty much most of his stalwart team all get their moments. Of course you got Benji, played by the inimitable geek god, Simon Pegg. I am never going to get tired of Benji. He is way too much fun, and he's just as much fun in this one. But I gotta say, the thing I'm really digging is seeing him become even more increasingly confident in the field. Because prior to that, he was the tech guy. But as he's progressed, he's becoming a lot more. He's actually trying to become a man of action. He's actually trying to be able to hold his own alongside Ethan. And... There's never any kind of stretch of credibility. You genuinely believe he is developing as an agent. And I really like seeing how Ethan really considers him a close friend and confidant. And the best part is because we've gotten to know Benji from the third movie, it's such a clean transition up to this point. But the one who I really think had the strongest emotional moment was actually Luther Stickle played by Ving Rhames. Now, Luther has been in these movies since the first one. The only movie where you could basically say he wasn't in was Ghost Protocol, but he even had a little cameo in there. Luther has always been there for Ethan, and Ethan, in turn, has always tried to reciprocate that loyalty. This movie actually kicks off with a moment where Ethan actually shows his true loyalty to Luther, and though it does come at the cost of the mission, it does save volumes for how close those two have become throughout the six movies. And there's an incredible scene, actually, yeah, a monologue with Luther where he talks about how much it means to him that Ethan actually was willing to sacrifice the mission for the sake of saving his life. It speaks volumes about how close Ethan actually is with his team, that it's not just about the fact that these are colleagues and the fact that these are just people he works with. These are 
Francis versus his surrogate family. And this movie really puts all that into perspective. Now, it seems like I'm getting into spoilers here, but anything I've just revealed is stuff you've already seen in the trailers. I'm still going to remain as spoiler-free as humanly possible because the plot actually does have some nice little twists and turns, ranging from the stuff you're like, wow, I did not see that coming, to the stuff that you might predict a couple minutes prior or you might call out way early on, but there's still fun twists. The film actually does do one particular reveal of an antagonist very early on in the movie. And it's a really good strategy because, let's face it, you kind of sense that this is where this particular character might go. And because they reveal it so early on, you don't really feel as jaded if they had saved it for, if they had saved it for the end of the movie then you would have been a bit jaded because you would have seen this coming a mile away. But because they just say, you know what, screw it, drop in this breadcrumb here, if you're smart enough to pick it up, cool. And it becomes more about how the rest of the characters are going to smoke out this particular antagonist. And you know what, that is really solid storytelling. If you know you've got something which is necessary, but unfortunately is something that you can't really hide too well, just go ahead and let loose and just let people react accordingly. I, yeah, I kind of guessed it, but I didn't care. I was enjoying it. Now, I know I've been rattling on about the story, so how is the action? Why do I even need to bring that up? The action in this movie is just as great as the other ones. This one has some particular standout moments, as all of the Mission Impossibles have. This one, I'd say the two that really stood out for me, there's a foot chase where Ethan is jumping over rooftops in order to catch up with his target. And then you've got this insane helicopter chase. We've seen helicopter chase before, but the thing that really pushes this one is the knowledge that Tom Cruise actually did learn to fly a helicopter in order to pull off this sequence. In getting into the helicopter, there's a freaky sequence where he's dangling from the underbelly of it in order to get in. And once again, because we know Tom Cruise is doing this stuff, the tension is thrown through the roof. Now, I'm not saying that all actors should learn to do their own stunts, but a level of admiration has to be given to Tom Cruise because he knows that the only way audiences are truly going to be invested is that they believe it 100%. And one of the best ways to do that is to completely destroy the lines between actor and stuntman. And Tom Cruise, I'm, I've heard tell that it pisses some stuntmen off, but on the other hand, I hear he's greatly admired by stuntmen because he's willing to learn the craft and be able to deliver the goods with the same level of professionalism as any stuntman does. And much credit has to be done for it. The finished result, when you look at these sequences, are unparalleled. This is the same kind of action that we've seen recently on minimalistic scales, such as John Wick, where because you're seeing the actor actually doing it, it really makes the scenes feel much more real. And this one is no exception to the rule. That's one of the things that makes the Mission Impossible franchise so much fun to watch, is to see the commitment, not just of Tom Cruise, but of all the other actors involved, to make a great looking action film. So really, that's not a surprise here. Now, as far as the main story goes, there is a pro and con to this. The pro is definitely much better than the con. This film legitimately feels like it's the buildup of everything that we've seen before, and a lot of plot threads actually get wrapped up, and it even, to an extent, kicks off some plot threads for the future to come. Now, with that, like any sequel, particularly one this late in the series, yeah, any newcomers are going to feel alienated. So, yeah, don't walk in on this one, otherwise you're going to get lost. But this is the sixth entry in the franchise. I mean, I know Mission Impossible isn't as interwoven as the MCU, but there's still stuff in the prior films that you're going to have to know leading into this one. So with that, the film is not exactly a standalone. Now, admittedly, some great sequels can work as a standalone. I can easily watch Terminator 2 without having to watch Terminator 1, and I can easily watch Aliens without having to watch Alien, but you gotta have some kind of continuity, otherwise it's just another movie. Now, this is not a bad way for movie series to go. We like seeing how the stakes get upped, and we like seeing these characters go on a continuing and emotional journey to try and find whatever it is they're looking for. So for myself, as a Mission Impossible fan, my complaints are minimal. Absolutely minimal. And with all this high praise I shower on it, how does it land on the quality scale? Well, keep it on Narcotic Casserole when I do the Less to More edition for Mission Impossible. And that should be coming up pretty soon. 
And uh, with that, I'm gonna leave it with my narcotic casserole rating of... Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think that this is probably the worst Mission Impossible yet? Do you think Henry Cavill's mustache should have been shaved off in aid of Justice League? Leave it all in the comments below. And for more addictive content on Narcotic Castrol, simply like, share, subscribe, click, thou shalt be served. But before I go, I want to do a shout out to The Real Gino, link below. He recently did a shout out for my channel on his show, Get On The Mic. He is a spectacular YouTuber. He's a great film reviewer. He's even got a great show, Gino's Bad at Games, where you watch him play video games, and he's incredibly funny. He's got a great personality. He's really fun to talk to. I've, I've had wonderful chinwags with him on the comments section on his video. He's commented on mine. He's a wonderful person. So, thank you.